uh, this is for Navisworks models. So we're going to start in uh, with Navisworks. Uh, here we have, we've opened up Naviswork. We have our model. We've loaded in our model, which of course is a collection of multiple models. And we've already set up three different tests. So we won't go into how you do tests in Naviswork. Uh, that's outside of the scope of this presentation, but just to see that we have three different tests. And actually for test two, we've grouped all the clashes and uh, renamed them based on the assignee. While as clash uh, test three, we haven't grouped the clashes. But we have, of course, uh, different statuses. We uh, have approval statuses. Uh, we have assigned them to different users and so on. If you want to share this information with our colleagues uh, who may not have Navis work, we're going to go through Power BI. To do that, first, let's have a look at the Navis work options, however. So for this to work, it is important that you set up this uh, option. So we need to go to interface, quick properties and definitions. You may or may not have any definitions. Uh, it, it isn't important. The important thing is that you must have a definition for category item and property GUID, because this is how we will then do the connection between the clashes and the objects inside of our model once we're in Power BI through VCAT. So once you have this set up, can go ahead and, and close everything. Uh, let's go back to the clash detective. And we want to export our report. So we're going to write our report. We're going to do a combined report of all three of our tests, both the grouped and non-grouped ones. And we're going to go ahead and click write report. Save the file somewhere that we can easily access later. Uh, we're just going to give it a, a useful name. And once we're done saving, uh, we can go ahead and close out uh, Navisworks and get ready to share our information with other people. Once you open our template, you will be presented with this text box uh, where you must give it the, the full path to that um, report that we've written in Navisworks. So we're just going to pull that XML file up and we're going to copy uh, both the uh, full name and, of course, the, the full path of the file. Paste those right into our text box. Okay, and uh, now once we get started, the, the visual will do as usual, the report as usual will load in uh, VCAD's regular uh, data sets and will also transform and read that report that we've exported from Naviswork, generating a set of new data sets that we have access to in our report. We won't go into too much detail of those, but I'm going to show you how the report works. So everything starts out with this uh, Clash template summary. Here we can review information of our three different tests. And we have some indicators, so number of clashes or clashes for a different status. Uh, what's very important here also, we have this uh, tags with errors. We want it to be blank. Blank means we have no errors. It's great. Otherwise, we may have to have a look at the data transformations and make sure that anything didn't go wrong during the, the, the initial import of data. We also have some other visuals sort of comparing the various tests. So we can see test one had a bunch of uh, clashes in new status and further revisions of the tests, things were better. Let's head on over to the Clash Detective uh, report page. This is a recreation of the Clash Detective uh, functionality inside of Naviswork. So again, we have our three tests here available. We can select a single test uh, and we can see which objects of our model were involved in the clash. We also apply a marker for each and every uh, clash that was detected. detected. Also, uh, the clashes here, we have a list of our clashes. They're grouped as they were grouped in, uh, in Naviswork. So as you, if you remember, test three was grouped. And if we focus in on a specific uh, group, we can see one of Jack's uh, clashes. These are the two objects involved. That is where the clash happened. And we can see uh, a, a little more information about the objects that were involved and the files that were involved. Also, we set up a tooltip with these markers to give us information about the clash and every comment that was ever made based on that clash as well. If we head on over to the test overview uh, page, this page is sort of focused on uh, getting a general uh, an idea of the whole test. So we can select a single test. And we can see that 
In this case, most of the clashes are either been approved or resolved, which is great. If we want to go deeper, we can focus in on the work of one assignee. So we're going to look at Emma's work now. And we can see the three tests uh, that were assigned to her. Again, we can click a single test and review the objects that were involved uh, in this specific clash, uh, as well as have information, both of the name, the object type, or the comments for that clash. Finally, as a theme, uh, we can either color the, the element, the objects differently, or we can color them based on the status of the clash. However, keep in mind that objects can uh, be involved in multiple clashes. And the various clashes can have different statuses. So in this case, uh, everything is yellow, it's fine. In this other case, the objects are involved in two different clashes. So one is yellow, one is green. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're applying a status uh, theme. Finally, smart tag overview is meant to help you easily see if there's any problems with the smart tag extraction, which are basically those script properties we set up in Navisworks. Uh, if we focus in on a specific uh, test, we can see that has tag errors. We don't have a true option to select from, which is great. It means everything went fine. And for each clash, we have those quick properties that we set up previously. So we have the item GOID and we have the item name that we were looking at before. Again, item GOID is the one that is fundamental.